Hey everyone, CPO here, and in this video, I'm gonna be pulling spark plugs out of my 2019 Golf R. I'm gonna check their condition, check their gap, and then I'm gonna do a compression test on all four cylinders. Let's get to it. All right, before we get started, the first thing we need to understand is there is a minimal oil temperature reading of 30 degrees Celsius. I'm at 115 Fahrenheit, which is higher than 30 degrees Celsius, so I'm good to go there, and my battery's in good shape. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove the connectors for the ignition coils. I like to use a little pick tool, makes it easier for me. Then I'm gonna zip off these bolts that are holding the ignition coils into the cylinder head. If you're trying to figure out why I don't have ground wires there and the double nuts, you'll have to go watch my last video where I added the EQT coil grounding kit, which relocated those grounds. So that's a different video, uh, go check that out. Anyway, removing these ignition coils, and next, uh, I'm going to pull the spark plugs. I did upgrade my spark plug socket to this one from Carbine. I really like it. It's magnetic. It's got the built-in uh, swivel extension. So uh, much better than the old spark plug socket I had before. I've been a really big fan of Carbine tools. And so I've been using them a lot lately. Pretty much every time I buy tools now, that's where I go. So yeah, I'm uh, removing the spark plugs. And we'll take another look at them here in a minute but you can see how the spark plug socket uh, just has the magnetic catch that grabs the spark plug pretty nicely i also like how the carbine tools on the extensions has the little knurling which works well for loosening and tightening things by hand using the extension which i tend to do a lot so not all extensions that i've had come with that knurling so kind of a nice touch that carbine does that all right, here's a look inside the cylinder uh, head valve cover. You can see I'm looking for any oil or other like nastiness. There's a little bit of gunk in there, which is to be expected, but there's no liquids, which is good. Uh, I had the spark plugs and the coils laid out in the order that they were removed. So I know which ones are which in case I have a problem. Yeah, looking at them all, they're all in really good shape. That was one. This is number two. This is number three. And finally, we have number four. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with these. I don't know how much mileage I have exactly on these. Maybe 10,000 miles, uh, maybe a little bit less. Uh, now I am gonna check the gap. Uh, they're gapped at 0 0.024 uh, 0 .024 inches. I basically wanna make sure it's so snug that it sort of holds on to the spark plug, but it should just barely slip in there um, and you're at the exact measurement. If it's got too much room, uh, then it's probably gapped too wide. And, and if it doesn't fit in there, it's gapped too narrow. So because it fits in there just barely, then uh, all of those are good, which is good because that's the way they stayed after I put them in. So I'm using this Deluxe Compression Tester Kit from OTC. I've been a huge fan of OTC tools. I've been lucky with them, I guess, uh, but they've never failed me. So we're gonna use the gauge. Uh, and then there is one adapter here that is our size, which is the M14 size that fits our spark plug holes. So I'm basically going to take this adapter and the hose and take it over to the car. Now I am going to do a video later on cylinder leakage testing. Uh, that's a different tool. So just know that video is coming in the future. So we are going to unplug the fuel injector plug and uh, use a pick tool to pull out the little red tab and then you can press the red tab to release the plug. It's the top plug and it's right in the front right of the intake manifold. All right, so now I'm screwing in just hand tight this uh, adapter for the pressure tester. It has an O-ring, so it should seal fine with uh, just hand tight, plugging in the gauge. And what I like about this gauge is it's long enough, I can stick it in the window because I do a lot of work myself. So I can actually read the gauge from inside the car and see when it's done increasing in pressure. Now I'll stop here because a lot of compression tester instructions include holding the gas pedal down to the floor, opening the throttle. The Volkswagen service manual does not talk about that at all. It just says start engine. And so uh, I was curious if it made a difference. And I know some people will say it does uh, just 
for grins, I did it both ways. I did the compression test with the gas pedal held to the floor. You have to hold the brake pedal, hit start, and then um, and I did it with the gas pedal also to the floor, and then I did it with the gas pedal not touched at all. And I got the same exact results. So take that for what it is. Like I said, the service manual doesn't mention it, although a lot of people historically have done it. I think it's less of an issue on these cars, but uh, if you're getting a weird result or you're not sure, you can't go wrong by holding the gas pedal to the floor when you do this, but just know I didn't get any different results. So what I'm doing now is I'm letting the car crank over until the gauge stops to increase in PSI value. For me, it was somewhere between 10 uh, to 12 cranks. So this reading is 195, 193, 194 PSI. I'm just going to round it up to 195. Uh, I can use a little pressure release and uh, then I can remove this out of the cylinder one and then swap it to cylinder two. Now I am writing these down. I'll show you that here in a minute. But what I want to do is just go get that reading for each of the four cylinders. And I'm looking for their individual values and then how much variance there is between the four cylinders. And I'll show you the spec on that from Volkswagen. So cylinder number two was about 190, almost exactly. And then releasing the pressure. And what I'm doing is I'm converting that to bar because the spec in Volkswagen is a bar spec. So uh, you can see I'm writing down the PSI and then the associated bar. Just finishing up these last two cylinders and getting those documented. Gives you a look at how it works if you're doing it by yourself. And here we go. Our new range is between 11 and 14 bar. I'm at 13 uh, in some change. So I'm at the high end of the new limit and I'm well within the value for the maximum difference between cylinders. So this is a good starting point for me and I will continue to basically use this as a baseline moving forward when I do compression testing. So putting all the spark plugs back in, don't forget to plug your fuel injectors back in. Some people will pull the fuel pump fuse, the low pressure fuel pump fuse. Uh, it's not necessary and I actually don't like the idea of doing that. I want the fuel pump to pump fuel because I feel like it keeps my high pressure fuel pump lubricated as it cycles fuel through the, through the high pressure fuel system. So, uh, you don't need to pull it, so uh, I didn't. Torquing these down to 22 newton meters and then putting in the coils. We're basically done, guys, with the compression test. Now I'm just putting everything back together. So if you feel comfortable with that, you can basically stop watching this video if you want. Otherwise, uh, you can watch me reinstall the coils and then uh, reconnect the connectors. And again, one thing that's different on my vehicle now from factory is I don't have those little ground wires that come off of each of the coil connectors. Uh, that has been rerouted to a chassis ground, which means I can just use these standard, these, uh, these are just 10 millimeter headed screws. Uh, they are M6 by one millimeter pitch, 45 millimeters long. And yeah, it just makes it so much easier because I don't have to deal with that whole double nut ground wire, don't twist the ground wire, don't break anything, yada, yada, yada. So now all those do is just hold the coil packs down. So super easy. Then the other thing I did do is go in and add this into my Carfax app so that I can keep track of my maintenance intervals. And uh, that way I'll have that information readily available uh, in the future. So you can see here 38,000 miles is when I did this. And you can see I've documented my PSI levels uh, for future reference. But that is it. That's the job. And like I said, I will do a leak down test in the future. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.